We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles, to gadget reviews, Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges, to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs and bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. With a little extra time on our hands, perhaps now is the opportunity to get into the DIY spirit and experiment with some DIY make your own food kits. We're gonna put a few to the test here to see if they're worth the effort during lockdown. And for wise wisdoms, we've also got Jamie dialing in from home. Hey Jay. I feel like an audience member. I feel like I'm in that frustrating position where I get to watch you make food, but I don't get to eat it. It does feel a little bit weird. The only safety blanket is I finally, after eight weeks, put a chef's jacket back on. Still no trousers though. Still no trousers <laughs> though. <laughs> He's even spun around. <laughs> All right, mate. So the first one I have, naked halloumi. Yes, Ebers, this is your make your own halloumi kit. It's everything you need to make eight batches of mouth watering Halloumi. The box comes with a thermometer, a cheese mould, um, some rennet tablets, uh, cheese salt, dried mint. They reckon that this will taste infinitely better than the usual supermarket rubber, their words. And this kit should give you enough uh, to create eight batches of mouth-watering halloumi. All you have to do is add milk. Right, only one way to put it to the test. Let's make some. So I need to heat some milk up to 32 degrees, stirring regularly so it doesn't stick, and dissolve a quarter of a rennet tablet into some cold water. So turn off the heat, add the rennet solution, stir, cover with the lid, and allow to leave to set for 40 minutes. Right, how's the halloumi looking? Jelly-like, it's got a real wobble on it. I've now got to make shallow cuts in both directions, stir gently, and then slowly heat it back up to 40 degrees Celsius. Now, I've got the cheesecloth that they've provided in a colander over a bowl, and we're gonna separate out the curds and whey. The fats and the proteins have separated out from the liquid. Some lumps are bigger than others. Oh, also, I've realised I'm not supposed to be straining it. See, I. I presume too much, but I'm supposed to be ladling it so the whey drips through. This is what happens when you give clear instructions to a chef who thinks they know better. It's so true. Leave it to settle for a couple of minutes and drain. Using the cloth, lift the curds gently into the cheese mould and press down gently so that the curds fill the whole mould. Save the whey, because we're going to need that. Allow to drain for 50 minutes, turning the cheese halfway through. I'm excited for this because this is cheese. I need to unwrap it and then cook it for 20 minutes in the way that we drained off before. And that's the best way to do that, is it? Apparently so, Jamie. Right. <laughs> See? Kind of bouncy. So once this is up to about 90, 95, this is going to go in, bring it back to a boil and then take it off the heat for 20 minutes. Then scoop it out into cold water to stop the cooking. Then pat it dry, and then we're gonna season it with cheese salt and dried mint. Um, in theory, as soon as it's cool, you can use it, but I think it's better if you leave it in the fridge overnight. This is the one that James made yesterday. It's looking good. It's set up super firm, and I'm hoping it's kind of got that squeakiness to it. Oh wow, that is cutting beautifully. Tastes good. The herb is amazing. And it does, even though you just sort the outside, it does kind of go all the way through. And this is the real test. Uh oh. Are you sticking? It is. Oh, oh no. I'm gonna try oiling some. Doesn't cook as well. It's almost too soft, I'd say, and not rubbery enough because any bits that char then pull away from the cheese rather than stick with the cheese. It's absolutely delicious and it has got a squeak. All right, big question. How much do you think the kit is? 22. It's 22.99. There's no denying that it's a bit of faff, and by that I mean there's a very involved process. But that's the point. You're mm -hmm. buying it to do it yourself and to go through that, which is kind of cool. But if you end up with eight blocks of halloumi, I think that's really good value. I just want to perfect the consistency so that it chars better. Um, hmm. It's good. 
Spin around, my ebbers. Make your own chili sauce. No ingredients required. You can craft your own fiery, or not so fiery, chili concoctions. So there should be enough ingredients in there to fashion a tangy six bottles worth. All the recipes have been developed by the Upton Cheney Chili Company, and these will be ready in under an hour. In the box, got the spice mix for the mango morita, the spice mix for spoky chipotle, got some dried chilies, clear bottles, funnels, vinegar, even got labels to put on our bottles. I'm excited to make my own chili sauce. However, I feel like the instructions and the marketing are a little misleading. Oh. The kit includes ingredients to make one batch of each flavor. So we didn't get anything else. And then you open up the recipes and in fact you need other ingredients, fresh ingredients plus tinned ingredients. Um, we haven't got tinned mango in the studio, so we're gonna have to make the smoky chipotle sauce. We have got tinned tomatoes. Preheat an oven, lid sterilized in boiling water. Put the chipotle chili in a cup of boiling water for at least 30 minutes. The bottles go into the oven at 120 degrees for 20 minutes. And that sterilizes them. If you wanna keep it for up to a year, which it says you can, then you need to make sure everything you're going to store it in is sterilised. Can you adjust the heat level of the chilli sauce? I'm going to say no. OK, great. <laughs> Based on the fact that you need to heat up the red wine vinegar in a pan with water, and once it's boiling, add in tin tomatoes, diced onion, Worcester sauce, plus your rehydrated chipotle chilli, removing the stalk and the packet of dried ingredients. And although it doesn't give you ratios, and I guess that's the secret, it's mustard powder, brown sugar, salt, chipotle spice, and garlic powder. So it's not saying as much as you see fit. Okay. And given it's full of sugar and spice, you'll probably want it all in to balance out the vinegar. So that's gonna bubble away for 30 minutes. Uh, and after 30 minutes, blend the sauce and pour it into the hot bottles. Simple. It smells incredible. Hot sterilized bottle, funnel. Well, well. <laughs> Three bottles done. I'll label them up when the bottles are cool, but I feel like we should taste it. Yeah. Because I've sealed it while hot, they'll last for up to a year, but once they're opened, six weeks in the fridge. That's the kind of consistency we're looking at. I wonder how hot it is. I don't normally eat chilli sauce, just off a spoon. <laughs> Smoky, definitely sweet. Enough of a tongue tingle to know it's there and it's beginning to, to draw a sweat, um, but really delicious. So what's your overall impressions of the kit then? I think it's good. It doesn't take particularly long, it's easy to do at home, and you do end up with three awesome bottles. And if you had to guess at a price? I'm going to say the magic 22 quid again. It's actually 19.99, so not far off at all. I think that's pretty good. Whether you buy it for yourself to create or you gift the whole box, that's pretty good. He's turned around, I didn't even ask him to. <laughs> Make your own gin cookies. That, if anything, sounds like it might be up your street, it's this. Ebers, this kit is going to allow you to create a boozy batch of edible gin cookies. Our kit takes care of all of the boring baking science, so all you need to do is slap in a knob of butter and slosh in a generous glug of your favourite gin. Mm. Oh! When has a generous glug ever been two teaspoons of gin? It's not enough gin. <laughs> okay, what it is though is really simple. Preheat an oven. It feels to me like this is slightly more novelty than the chilli sauce and the halloumi that's come before it. And maybe novelty is not what Ben's looking for when it comes to gin. It's bizarre because the make your own bit, I kind of think is when it applies to something like cheese, which you wouldn't normally make your own. Kids age six make their own cookies. Yeah, but these are gin cookies and you love gin. It's got two teaspoons of gin in it. We'll see if that makes any difference. Tip the contents of the bag into a bowl, two teaspoons of gin, and 100 grams of softened butter. 
They claim that it's enriched with the heady juniper and cardamom notes. There's cardamom powder in your flour mix and your two teaspoons of gin might give it that juniper flavour. Take a spoonful of the mix and roll into balls approximately the size of a walnut. Place them on a lined baking tray spaced apart and flatten. <laughs> What's it say on the back of the box? Make 10 to 12 warm, boozy cookies in 10 minutes. Do you want to know the next instruction, Jay? Let the cookies cool in the fridge for 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm trying to be fair here, but these are the smallest walnuts <laughs> I've ever seen, and I've still only got nine. <laughs> it says 10 to 12. <laughs> so after chilling up in the fridge, squish them a bit flat, put them in the oven to bake, as per instructions. They are baked. They've got a nice, very gentle golden hue over them. It does look like a good cookie. I don't imagine it's gonna be a chewy cookie. I think it's definitely like a buttery, shortbready kind of cookie, but there's nothing wrong with that. They said melt in the mouth. Absolutely. They also said heady notes of juniper and cardamom. Oh no, you're trying, aren't you? If I really shut my eyes and think about it. No. No. <laughs> Beautifully simple to make, rich, buttery cookies. The gin is pointless, other than to put that on the label. Two teaspoons spread across nine and baked. They're not boozy, they're not heady with juniper, and there's not even a huge amount of cardamom in there. You've obviously been well impressed, but how much do you think the gin cookies cost? Four fifty. Nine pound ninety nine. Mmm. I think because of the name and because of the gin element, it does make a quirky little gift. Last one. Give it a lift. This is the homemade curing kit for bacon. The Ross & Ross best-selling award-winning kit contains everything you need to make your own original sweet and smoky cured bacon at home. Just add pork. We have fennel and juniper cure, English mustard and pink peppercorn cure, and maple and chipotle cure. It also comes with a muslin cloth and butcher's hook so you can hang your pork in the fridge along with plastic gloves so you don't get your hands dirty. This is cool. Never made my own. Mm -mm. Step one, go to your butcher's and ask for a 500 gram piece of pork, rind off and bone free. It's business time. No! That's what it says. That's no. what it says. No! That's what it says. It's business time. I don't think it says to wiggle your fingers, but... <laughs> Put the pork belly into a sealable bag. Pour in your chosen salt. Jay, which one are we going to go for? Three flavours. We've already done a chipotle. We've already done juniper. So I think we've got to go English mustard. Salt, demerara sugar, English mustard, pink peppercorns, and the preservative, sodium nitrate. Rub your pork. Seal the bag, make sure that no air is left inside the bag. So the curing process, yes, it seasons it and gives it flavour, but the salt and the sugar will also draw out the moisture and take the pork to a place where basically bacteria can't survive because of the water content um, and the, the salt and the sugar is that curing process. That will need two days in the fridge, flip it, another two days in the fridge, and then you take it out, wash it in cold water, dry it, and then hang it in your fridge with the butcher's hook provided and some of your muslin cloth, all wrapped up so that it can breathe but is in the fridge for another three days. Luckily for us, James has done all that for us and he tried all three flavours. What a nice guy. I say luckily for us, you're there. Lucky for me. <laughs> so three different flavours, four days of curing, three days of air drying in the fridge. And you can see the texture's completely changed. Yeah. But nowhere near as far as like a billetong or a jerky, which is like super chewy, but there's a noticeable difference. And all three smell incredible. I've got a pan heated. I just could do bacon pieces rather than cook off the whole thing. I've also chosen for now to do it in a hot dry pan. Obviously there's natural fats in the pork, but I'm not frying it in additional fat, just that so we've got its purest form. As a DIY kit, I quite like this one because like the cheese, there's lots of waiting to see how things change and develop. It feels like a project to me because yeah. you've got the anticipation of it. You have to keep going back to it. You have to keep tending it, but that becomes your responsibility for quite a large amount of time. And I, I enjoy that. That's, that's a proper project. It's really simple. And the step-by-step -step ingredients are idiot-proof. So it does it all for you. 
but you still get the satisfaction of having created what I hope is super tasty bacon. First one up, fennel and juniper. That is everything you want in bacon. Mustard and pink peppercorn. Definitely get mustard on that one because it gets you in the nose. Lastly, maple and chipotle. It is sweet from the maple and spicy, but also smoky. That's really good. Well, the big question is how much do you think the curing kit costs? 15 quid. It's 20 pounds. I'm, I'm still happy with that and I still think it's a great it's a great thing, and I do feel accomplished. Okay, Ebers, we had four DIY food kits. Did you have a favorite? I, I've never made halloumi before. I've never cured bacon before. They're really cool. I think there's some really good takeouts from here, and more importantly, I've enjoyed the process as much, if not more, than the end product. Right, over to you guys. What did you think? Would you give any of these a go? Or have you been trying some other new stuff during lockdown? In which case, comment down below, let us know. And if there's other DIY make your own food kits we should try, we absolutely will. We've also built the Sorted Club, where you can get tons of foodie inspo using the PAX Midweek Meal app, discover and share restaurant recommendations using the Eat app, listen and contribute to our Feast Your Ears podcast and send us ideas for new cookbooks you'll receive throughout the year. Check it all out by heading to sorted.club. And now a blooper. I don't know how your lockdown's going, but I'm sitting here on a Zoom call <laughs> watching my friend. <laughs> Separate curds and whey. <laughs>